We are in conversation with Swami Mukundanan, the spiritual master who comes to Bay Area once a year and spends time here with us. And this time he is bringing us a talk on seven divine laws for happiness and fulfillment in Sunnyvale. Uh, this is happening from April 7th to April 13th. So we are uh, talking to him right now. And uh, Swamiji, I would really like to ask you, that uh, with so much of traveling, as you mentioned, you travel in India to various remote villages, then you are here in the Bay Area. And uh, of course, there's very different kind of food that everybody is used to at different parts. How do you take care of your health? Yes, Seema. Janakya Pandit said that exposure to the sun reduces the life of clothes. Travel reduces the lifespan of a person. So with all my travel, I realized that maintaining health is critical to this work. And that is why as a self-discipline, I take out time every day to do the yogasans, the aerobics, the exercises to sustain my health. As a child, I was introduced to yoga at a very young age. In between, there was a period when I was not practicing the yogasans. But when I entered Kripaluji Maharaj's ashram and I started studying the scriptures under him, all of a sudden I received this inspiration to start doing yogasans again, which I felt was because of him. And now I realize that it has been a big blessing of God. Because those yogasans enable a person to remain healthy. And then about 10 years ago, Kripaluji Maharaj asked me to start teaching yoga. I then made a survey of the different yoga peets in India, which was Kaivalya Dham in the West and Shantivan of Gayatri Mission and Baba Ramdev in Haridwar the Bihar School of Yoga in Eastern India, S. Vyasa University in South India. And I took out the best practices of these to establish the JK Yoga system of yoga for the body, mind and soul. This system is for holistic health, for taking care of various aspects, the physical, mental, intellectual and spiritual. So we have five sciences in the system, the yogasans or postures, the breathing exercises or pranayam, meditation for mind management, a deep healing technique called subtle body relaxation and the science of healthy diet. In order to teach these sciences, I kept on enhancing my knowledge of these by reading as much as I could and gradually developed a grip over it. So my personal practice has also been changing with times. Once I crossed the age of 50, then I realized that to remain healthy, I needed to change my regimen. Mm -hmm. You see, you need three kinds of exercises to be healthy. The first is the flexing and there's abundance of that in the yogasans. The second is the aerobics to retain the muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And the third is the cardio to keep the heart healthy. So as I crossed 50, then I increased the aerobics. Amongst the yogasans, there are so many anti-gravity yogasans that provide a lot of aerobics in order to maintain the muscle mass. And wow. then uh, recently, I came across an article which said that one of the important things to help you be healthy in old age in the 70s and 80s is what they call high intensity interval training. Whoa, what's that? You engage in a high intensity exercise, take a little break and then again engage in a high intensity exercise. So I get my cardio from the Surya Namaskar. <laughs> Okay. And I just increased the rounds. So do a few rounds, take a little break, do a few rounds, take a little break. It's the perfect way for exercising the heart. So this is the way I have been sustaining my health in between about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I uh, fractured my back in two places. 
two places. Wow. It was a compression fracture where the cartilage got compressed, and I was bedridden for one month. The doctor told me that okay, you are getting cured, but after this, you will never again be able to lift loads or bend forward in your life. So. my philosophy is that impossible is a word in the fool's dictionary so i started reading about back aches and realized that these back aches can be cured by strengthening the muscles along the spine mm-hmm. and so i added those postures which would help with back aches mm-hmm. the result was that i enhanced my exercise on a daily basis and I actually became a healthier person than i was from before and i can bend forward freely i can lift all the luggages that i need to so i do not feel handicapped it is the result of a regular daily discipline of the various exercises needed and the other thing is about the food you mentioned that need to eat different kinds of foods mm-hmm. so always maintain a little bit of awareness where are the proteins where are the carbohydrates where are the vitamins where are the antioxidants how much fat is there in the food people bring out of their devotion out of their love but i like to eat what is good for the body and slowly the devotees have learned that you know we can't tempt swami ji with jalebis <laughs> and gulab jamuns <laughs> so they have started bringing healthy foods for me it works to my convenience and benefit Wow, uh, and I I think that's so promising for the people. Like when you mentioned about the backache, that like because traditional uh, medicine normally only shows you two routes. That is full of surgery and steroid injections. So that's like so much hope for so many people. And uh, also, uh, Swami Ji, you're getting reputed as the international authority on mind management. Why did you choose this topic for your talks and programs? Seema, my training. as a spiritual teacher was in pure philosophy kripalu ji maharaj trained me in the vedic knowledge from the scriptures and for decades in india i was teaching pure philosophy there was a huge audience for it people in india loved to hear whether god is formless or he has a form and how do we establish our relationship with him but then he asked me to spread the same knowledge in usa and when i reached here the indians in america i found that their mindset was different they were not interested in hearing pure philosophy it was a more practical mindset what is there in it for me <laughs> okay the mindset is there in the westerners and it is there in the indian americans as well mm-hmm. so i needed to adapt these teachings to show the people its relevance with their daily lives Mm-hmm. And what better way to do it than the mind? Mm-hmm. Because our Vedas say, "Man eva manushya nam karanam bandh mokshayo." The mind is the cause of bondage, and the mind is the cause of liberation. Mm-hmm. So our scriptures abound in the knowledge of the functioning of the mind, its alleys in which people get stuck. and the tools and techniques for mind management so i just brought them out with some practical real life examples a little bit of logic a little bit of quotations a few years ago was the first time i spoke on the art of mind management all over usa mm-hmm. and people loved it subsequently we published a book as well and then we've been having related topics like this time i am speaking on the seven divine laws for happiness and fulfillment so it is the same knowledge the philosophy of the scriptures that is being presented in a manner where people can appreciate its relevance to their daily lives and its utility in what they are doing so uh i believe you're bringing a university here so you are Uh, in the process of building a university can you tell us a little more about that some of the ills in society are due to the educational system the educational institutes at present offer courses in material education 
they teach us how to be good engineers, good doctors, good advocates. However, the imparting of spiritual science, how to be better people, is not done. That is why at the end, having passed out of the educational institute, people learn how to earn money, but they don't learn how to manage themselves. So we have doctor making education, engineer making education, advocate, accountant making education, but we don't have man making education. Swami Vivekananda said, education is the art of man making. So I thought that this is one field where if the focus is made, a real difference can happen in the lives of people. One was the desire to introduce spirituality in the curriculum. And beyond that, let's say there is another institute that wants to have spiritual courses. Where do they get teachers from? There's a dearth of teachers. Or if there is a corporate house that wishes to have such a workshop for their employees, they are not any people who can teach it. So... The idea was to create a university that would offer people a new career path. In other words, going through the university, they would be trained to teach spirituality. And further, we established in the state of Orissa, presently the only 50-bedded naturopathy hospital of eastern India. And through it, we are teaching holistic lifestyle to the people. Slowly, naturopathy is becoming extremely popular, holistic health is becoming e extremely popular, and the demand is arising in society for trained personnel in these fields. The institute, the university is still in the process of getting established, but ultimately it will offer courses in spirituality, in naturopathy, in holistic health, and in Vedic sciences. However, we realize that everybody needs a career through which they can earn their bread. And since these are new career paths, we will also have the secular education so that people alongside with these specialized topics can also go through the regular topics so they have a career path to fall back upon. From the government of Odisha, we purchased 100 acres of land in the rural area surrounded by many villages. Mm -hmm. This is a little distant from Katak and from Bhuvaneshwar, the two big cities of Orissa, mm -hmm. by the side of the river Mahanadi. And on the other side, it's got a forest. So it's a very beautiful piece of land. We established there a hospital, a charitable hospital for the villages around. They are all looking forward to the university as a means for development of the entire area. And slowly this vision is unfolding by the grace of God. And we are optimistic that within the next two years, we should have it up and running and then slowly it will grow. But it will provide also education for the rural youth and health care for the underprivileged. That's awesome. And uh, Swamiji here in the USA also, uh, I believe you conduct many retreats uh, all uh, everywhere in the USA. So what is the purpose of these retreats? Seema, consider the example of milk and water. If you place milk in the water, it will not retain its original identity. It will get diluted. But if for some time you can separate the two of them, transform the milk into yogurt, churn the yogurt and extract butter. That butter can then challenge the water. Mr. Water, I will sit on your head and float. You can do nothing to me. As long as I was milk, you used to dilute my identity, but now I have become butter. So like the milk is our mind and like the water is the world. When we live in the world, even though we may have the best intentions mm -hmm. of engaging in spiritual pursuits and uplifting the state of our mind and consciousness, 
we often fail because of the various distractions that are there. However, if for some time we can retreat ourselves from the world, we are then able to focus on contemplating, meditating, reflecting. So as I travel through USA for seven months, we offer about four retreats in different places. We have the upcoming retreat in the West Coast. Then the Memorial Day weekend retreat will be in the East Coast. We will have a family camp in Dallas. There will be the Labor Day retreat in mm -hmm. uh, uh, Texas. And also we have many retreats in India. So the retreats provide people an opportunity to nurture and cultivate their spirituality. Mm -hmm. The first day when they come, they are unwinding from their worldly consciousness, absorbing themselves in God, succeeding sometimes, failing sometimes. Then they go to sleep. And the next day when they wake up, it is smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. They hear lectures. They engage in meditation, chant bhajans, have a fun time in spiritual pursuits, do some yoga, pranayam have the opportunity to get their doubts clarified. And then the second night they go to sleep, the third morning when they wake up, it is sheer bliss because the mind now runs to God. Mm -hmm. And the consequence is they get the bliss of God. So I'm so habituated to people coming up to me at the end and saying, Swamiji, these were the best days of my life. Mm -hmm. And I know why because their minds got absorbed in God mm -hmm. and they received the bliss of God. Mm -hmm. So these retreats, Seema, are actually a family event. We also have classes for programs tailored mm -hmm. for the children, the Balmukund classes, and we have programs tailored for the youth, the JK Yoga Youth Club, where we teach them leadership skills mm -hmm. and lectures on Bhagavad Gita, presentations, blog writing, music, cooking, etc., etc. We make it a fun time for the entire family. So since you mentioned that it's uh, family time and so people can get their kids with them and uh, there are so many activities out there. But uh, like sometimes our idea of devotion or spirituality does not match up always like 100% with what the school and cir social circles they are involved in. So uh, do you think how uh, this diverse exposure can they handle and do they look up to those retreats? How does it happen there? The first time you have to coax them a little bit. <laughs> However, once they come there and they realize it is not the kind of torture that they were thinking it would be. In fact, it's sheer joy. Then the next time they come on their own. So we had this family that came from Los Angeles to the Fresno retreat. And the father and mother really wanted to attend. Their children were in middle school. They convinced them to come. The children were not interested. The parents got all the video games for them. And they came equipped with the video games. But during the retreat, the children got so engrossed, they did not even look at these video games. And since then, next year onwards, they were coming on their own. So there is honey in a bottle. It's extremely tasty. Somehow or the other convince the person to open the bottle and taste it. Once they relish the taste, they will come to it on their own. Well, that's awesome. And uh, so, Swamiji, I know that we have uh, less time, but if before we let you go, uh, if you would like, uh, like to leave our listeners with something or you would like to talk about the upcoming uh, lecture transformation series that you have here in the Bay Area, uh, whatever you want to leave them with. All right, Seema. Yesterday, we began a new series in the Sunnyvale Hindu Temple. This was the seven divine laws. Just as we have physical laws which we studied in physics and chemistry, there are also laws of life, cosmic laws that govern our inner nature. Lack of knowledge of these laws leads to unhappiness, unfulfillment, misery, failure. And this all can be changed by merely grasping what these laws are 
and implementing them in our lives. So for example, the first law is the law of infinite potential. When we develop self-awareness and realize that we are not these bodies made of matter, rather we are the eternal soul, and the soul is a fragmental part of God, then in alignment with the will of God, the soul is not limited, it has got infinite potential. The second law is the law of incremental growth. To realize that infinite potential is not a unit step function zero one. It's a slow and steady climb. In order to achieve or accomplish that journey, we need to engage in a daily practice which requires discipline. So discipline is the cornerstone of growth. It's the bridge between knowledge and its implementation. Discipline will require self-control or willpower. Willpower is one of the crowning virtues that is connected to success in every aspect of our life. I will be talking about this willpower today. Mm -hmm. But there is another aspect of our human personality. Beyond willpower is the why power. The reason for doing something. If we can be motivated and inspired, people have been known to uplift their efforts to superhuman levels. This why power brings us to the third law for success, fulfillment and happiness, which is the law of beliefs. Beliefs are so important, changing them changes the trajectory of our life. The most important belief is in regard to where does happiness lie. So the fourth law then is the law of happiness. To understand happiness is not in material things. It is within ourselves. To be truly happy, you need to be a better person. If somebody can understand that, it makes a vital difference. How do we become a better person? This brings us to the next law, which is the law of sublimation of desires. This path is not about suppressing. It's about replacing a lower desire by a higher desire. And in order to achieve that, we'll need to work on the mind. This will bring us to the sixth law, which is the law of the subconscious mind. I will explain how the subconscious mind is such an important aspect of our personality that is impinging upon the conscious mind. And we need to learn the techniques of self-talk, affirmation and visualization mm -hmm. to purify the subconscious mind. Finally, I'll come to the law of mentorship. The corporate world today realizes that if you get a mentor, it just leapfrogs your career. Mm -hmm. This concept of mentor was given in our scriptures as the guru. Okay. If we can get a guru, that can really facilitate our journey. I'll be discussing these seven laws in the series that is taking place. So, uh, guys, you just heard uh, what a wonderful topic it is. So, the willpower, the why question, or uh, just to feel inspired, to feel where lies our happiness, where lies our fulfillment. Do drop in today. It's a Sunday. So, if you are just driving around Sunnyvale Hindu Temple or uh, it'll be worth your drive, just come by. Uh, this is happening at the Sunnyvale Hindu Temple. And that also brings me like... Uh, uh, Swamiji, before we let you go, if like just you could briefly tell us about your next topic that is on Srimad Bhagavatam that's happening in Milpitas. Seema, this series is on applied spirituality, which is of course very important. But there are some people who love pure spirituality. And personally, Bhagavatam is sheer bliss. It's the nectar of divine knowledge and divine wisdom. So in the next series in Milpitas, I will be giving the week-long program on the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the traditional Bhagavat Sapta. And it will be an opportunity to relish the wonderful pastimes of God, His devotees. And as we hear them, there will be many episodes of knowledge and divine conversations which will come through which 
we'll have the opportunity to reach the different gems of wisdom that are embedded in our Vedic scriptures. So I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing that message of the Srimad Bhagavatam with the listeners in the subsequent week. So for more information, you can always log on to jkyog.org. That's jkyog.org. Uh, you can just uh, come there. It is a free admission. And also dinner will be served daily after the program. So just be a part of these lecture series in Sunnyvale and Milpitas happening from April 7 to April 13th in Sunnyvale and happening from April 14 to April 18th in Milpitas. Uh, and with that... Uh, uh, Swamiji, I really, really would like to thank you from everybody here at the studio of KLOK. It's a great pleasure and a great honor to have you here live in the studio. It was really a blessing. And what all like you shared, I think even if we can go by and just apply maybe one or two rules today that you said, and I think maybe our lives will be better lives. So thank you so much uh, for joining us here on KLOK 1170 AM. Thank you, Seema. Thank you for inviting me to your studio. It was a pleasure speaking to you. And my best wishes and my prayers for the well-being of all your listeners on your radio show today. Namaste. Namaste, Swamiji. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for joining us here on KLOK 1170 AM. You have a great rest of the day. And I know weekend is coming to an end and we all have a working week tomorrow. So, yes, uh, just... Uh, do refresh yourself and I see you tomorrow at 4 sharp. Until then, this is Seema saying, do keep shining, do keep smiling.